Hello, and welcome back to another session of Brick Therapy. Today, I'll be building and reviewing set 10210. This is the Imperial flagship that was released in 2010. It was $180 when it was first released, and now a new one will set you back upwards of almost $1,000. The box says there's 1,664 pieces. There are nine minifigs that come with this set. The set was sold only in Lego stores and shop at home when it was first released. This is the biggest pirate ship that was ever released at 30 inches long and 24 inches tall. On the back displays the features of the set as well as a cool image of the ship in action. The top shows you all the pieces that come with this ship. This set came with two instruction manuals. On the back it looks like there's some advertisement and display of set 10196. Looks like a carousel ride. I'm really excited to build this for the first time. So let's take a minute to put it together and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so here it is. This is Lego set 10210, the Imperial flagship. And this one really is a good representation of an Imperial flagship, as opposed to what we've got with the old red coat Imperial flagship and the Armada flagship. So before we start, let's take a look at the minifigs. All right, so the set comes with nine minifigs. Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at is Governor Tierney. We've seen him before. There's nothing new with him. Then we have his daughter. Her name, I think, is Lee Tierney. Lee comes with a slope dress for legs and an alternative print on the back with an upset face. I believe I read somewhere that in some sets, maybe in other countries, she came with alternative legs, but I did not receive it with mine, and this is a used set, so I'm not sure if it did come with it originally or not. Here we have the Imperial officer, and he's distinguished from the other red coats by his hat. In old vintage sets, they had yellow epilepsy, from the neck down, he has the same uniform as all the other Imperial Guards, but he does have a unique face print. And here we have the crew from the ship. These are four Imperial Redcoats. They have printing on the back that has a satchel and the cross bands. Other than that, they have the same blue epaulets that we see in the Vintage sets, but they do have the new Shaco hats. Each of the Imperial Guards has a unique face printing. This minifig is unique because even though he's the cook on the ship, he actually could be a bad guy. Maybe he's a spy and he's there to free Captain Brickbeard, but he does not look happy. So hopefully his food's better than his attitude. He has the short non-bendable legs. Okay, here we have Captain Brickbeard. The only difference from previous sets, now he has some jewelry attached to his wrist and his hat is missing the crossbones and skull. And the ship itself is impressive. This is the biggest ship so far that I've built or reviewed. It has three masts and the center mast has three sails, which is the first for me, uh, both in number of masts and number of sails on one mast. All right, this is a big ship, so let's take it in pieces. First, let's look at the outside. On each side, we have four cannon ports, and they're covered by these blue flags. Actually, if you look at this ship, without looking at the red flag at the top, you would think that it belongs to the blue coats. You have light blue, regular blue, and some darker blues up here. There's a lot of blue on the ship to make you think that it belongs to the blue coats. On this top deck, which is the first for any of the ships I've built, there are no weapons. At the front of the ship, we have a sawtooth shark. One of the things lacking on this ship is any string. Everything is made with plastic or it's using uh, hard rods to hold the flags. Up here at the upper deck, it's very sparse. You have the steering wheel, you have a 
telescope and then you have a sextant on the side here. For a flagship, looking at the top without the cannon ports open, you wouldn't think that it's a warship because there's no armament on the outside that is very visible, especially when the cannon ports are closed. Let's look at the captain's cabin. You can access it by lifting up this thin plate. And down here, first thing you see at the front is a simulated drawer. It does not open. You have a map of some kind of a landmass. Let me see if I can zoom in. It's like a landmass, so it looks like something you would need a small boat to go up a river to get to. You have some kind of a blue liquid maybe in a vase and you have two doors that lead you into this room. I think they could have done with just having one door and then splitting the other side to include a bed or a table to eat or something. We have a chest full of treasures. You have four gold pieces and four different colored gems. Back here you have an organ. Nice build but like I said I would rather have it have amenities for like a bed or a table. It'd be cool to have like a dining table in here and then maybe a bed on the side. And then on the opposite end, you have a telescope that's mounted to a stand. This top deck can be accessed by a ladder that is right here. Okay, let's take the two parts out and look inside. At the front, we have a cell that takes up a big chunk of space. I think they could have split this wall right here and given Captain Brickbeard just a very small bed to lay in. And then the rest could have been a storage unit or maybe a weapons, arms, storage area. Then again, you probably don't want weapons in close proximity to prisoners. So maybe an area for the ship's crew to sleep. Also over here, you're going to see the bottom workings of the anchor. So you can twist it and then the chain will elongate, allowing you to anchor ship. And when you're ready to bring up the anchor, you have the crew spin it back the other way and the anchor will come up. I've seen in other reviews they said the anchor is not long enough but the thing is most people will have this on display on a table and the anchor is not going to go that far down anyways. But I guess you could extend it if you wanted to by using another chain. Alright with the back section off you can see the full galley of cannons. The set comes with four cannons that you have to share with both sides. If you had four more you can put them in here and then the crew wouldn't have to move the cannons back and forth. You have a total of 10 cannonballs. Five in each of these two white bins. Back here we have two muskets on the wall next to these two flames and then a doorway into the kitchen. Over here is where the food is being prepped. You have a chicken on a rotisserie and flames underneath. You have two fish in a crate and you have some pots and pans and two knives up on the wall. I really like the height of this bottom level because even soldiers with shako hats will fit standing straight up. So let's talk about some of my criticisms for this set. There's not a lot. I really don't have a lot of criticism. I love this set for what it is. But like I said earlier, I think the prisoner area should be cut in half or maybe more. I think there should be a doorway in here that cuts it off. Maybe right here so all they have is like a seating area and then the rest could be for the crew as you can see here there's only two plungers for the cannons that means of the four cannons that you have here only two could be loaded at any one given time and 10 cannonballs seems a little low. That means each cannon has about two shots and then you're done. This ship is lacking a lot of small arms. You have like these two flint lock muskets and that's it. There's nothing else except maybe the knives. Everything else that's being carried by the crew is all you have. On this top deck, you have these openings that will allow you access to the inside. The thing is the ship doesn't come with any cranes to get people or stuff in and out. So it's very hard. I mean, even though you can open it, it's hard to get anything out. Like let's say if you want to raise the cannons out and put them on the top deck, you can't do that. And the only way for crew members to get up and down is just to jump down and maybe have someone lift them up. There's no ladder or stairs to get them up from the bottom deck. Another complaint I have is like these doors to the captain's cabin, there's not enough space for them to fully open. It only opens part way. And I believe this is the first of the larger sets not to have a small boat. So luckily I have a couple of small boats here. Overall, I really like this set. I think this is the first time that we received an Imperial flagship that lives up to its name. One thing I would have liked is to see a more diverse crew, not diverse in their faces, but in their uniforms. It looks like these are more like the Marines that you would see on a ship, not the sailors. So it would be nice to see a few sailors. I believe this ship should also have a lot more small arms, probably a lot more of the muskets. They should have at least one musket for each of the Imperial Guards well as some in reserve. And of the whole ship, you only have two swords. So when it comes to repelling pirate and hand-to-hand -hand combat, your crew is not going to have enough weapons to handle that. Right, I'm really excited to see what I can do by mocking the other two Imperial flagships that I have. Maybe I will change the colors to red to be more in line with the Imperial red coats. I put these two boats 
on deck. I probably just need some kind of winching system to get them down. All right, that's my review of set 10 to 10, the Imperial flagship. I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed putting it together. And I'll see you next time on another session of Brick Therapy. Take care. Thank you.